Hello, ladies and gents of the web hiding behind your browsers. How are you today? I'm great. My name is Paul. And this is my studio, Warsaw, Poland. Welcome back. And let's start with the audio news of the week. <laughs> As always, the first news, which is kind of an important for me personally, is that Tom Aberheim is up to something with Dave Smith and Sequential once again. There's a new vid on Oberheim official channel. The gentlemen are together sitting at the bar. The video ends with let's party like it's 2099. So maybe it's gonna be a new future of the, of the analog synthesis by Oberheim and Sequential. Who knows, but this sounds really, really amazing to me. The second news, and this is the thing that everybody's talking about. Do you remember when last year Native Instruments and Isotope teamed up to announce they're gonna work on new products, integration of products and new technologies? Well, Plugin Alliance, Brainworks and a new company called Soundstacks joined them to create an audio supergroup that's called Soundwide. Well, and they are giving lots of great stuff, plugins for free. So check out their new offers to grab lots of free goodies. And let's wait what's going to happen, because that's going to be hmm, exciting, probably. New technologies, new integrations, new plugins, new tools, new stuff. Hmm. I'm looking forward to it. The third news is that you should go and visit Splice if you're using it because there's a new rent to own offer and it's Bitwig Studio. Yeah, it's a new thing and also looks cool. Hmm. The fourth news is my personal studio news that I changed my setup a bit. I quit using one of my large monitors in front of me. So the position of my monitors is more narrow right now. The geometry of, of my listening environment changed a bit, but still, yes, my tweeters are inside, not outside. As one of the viewers of my channel noticed, hey, your KSD monitors are swapped. Yes, they are, it's, a pur it's for a purpose, I know because I have to keep them quite wide and putting the tweeters inside, not outside, makes my stereo imaging more proper. Well, let's not elaborate on this. No more, it's good like this. Just trust me, it's uh, for a reason, it's on purpose. And let's go to the topic of today's video, which is filters, analog versus digital filters. I wanted to do a vid about it long, long time ago because I've always had this question, as many of you, are really analog filters so much better than digital filters? Um, is it always better to have analog filtering? Um, can digital emulated filtering stand up to great analog uh, filters? And so on and so on. Today, that's what we're gonna check out. Yeah, analog versus digital filters. Before I present you the rules of today's battle, clash, contest, please meet our contestants. On my very right, the famous Moog Subsequent 37 with its really, really famous, legendary, classic leather filter. The second one is here on my very left. It's a Box 3 by Arica Synth, which is based on Polyvox filtering module. Then also on my left, Axis Virus TI, which is a hardware filter, but a digital one. I can feed it with an external input, so perfectly fine to test it too. And then come three VST filters of my choice. The first one is Universal Audio Moog XL filter, which is an emulation of the very same leather filter that I have on my right. Then comes Filter Freak by Sound Toys. Well, it's a famous one, it's a must for many people, so yeah, we have to test it. And then I decided to take Volcano 3 filter, which I don't use too much, but I do have it, so let's just include it. So we've got two analog for digital, three hardware versus three software. Let's get it on. But to get on, we have to create something first.
Um, yeah, uh, I hope that's enough for the purposes of today's demonstration, guys. And take a look at the session. This is the arrangement, nothing really too fancy, really, really simple. Um, something happening in the bass, in the mids and in the highs. It's clean enough to also make our judgments and our listening tests clear, let's say, I hope at least. Um, and I took this signal, I made this signal mono, and I ran it through filters. Yes, it's mono because my Moog filter is mono. The rest is stereo, but I decided to do the test mono because of my Moog machine. But that's, I still think it's gonna be fair enough. The second remark is that I chose 12 dB slope for all my filters because my Acidbox 3, which is based on Polyvox, has a slope of 12 dB filter and I cannot change it. So also to make it kind of fair and comparable, I decided to go 12 dB per active. The third thing is I divided it into some groups. The first run I did I called it transparent. These are, these are very moderate input settings of all the filters. The whole filter is sweeping. You'll, you'll, you'll hear that filter sweeping twice with no resonance and very moderate settings. Then I added some saturation with no resonance to each of the fil filters as well, as you'll listen further. And then the third run was that I took this saturated setting and I added comparably same amount of resonance and then I did the third run. The last remark, guys, is also kind of important. I hope you're fine with the fact that my test is not going to be scientific. I mean, uh, when using my hardware, I simply was, was turning my knobs, opening and closing the filter. Not everything might be time aligned perfectly, like to millisecond. That's the first thing. Also, I was trying to look for some very similar settings for saturation and mm, resonance, but you may hear some very slight audible differences in timings, in saturation, and in mm, resonance. I hope you're fine with it. I wanted to make my test alive, I wanted to make it musical, I wanted to make it real life example. I'm not an audio scientist, I'm a producer, I'm a guy that likes turning the knobs. So please bear with me and I still believe that this test is gonna tell us a lot about analog versus digital filtering. So let's go for it. Let's get to the first part of our listening test and let's hear how the transparent versions of the filter sound. And I did it the way that I took my Moog analog filter, then I took my UAD version of this filter, then I took Filter Freak, which should sound quite similar to Moog, I believe. Then I took my Virus filter, Volcano filter, Acid Box filter. Well, let's take a listen. Thank you. 
my impressions are, first, I didn't know that UAD and Filter Freak, I know they are similar to The Real Ladder by Moog, but mm, I'm kind of shocked because they are very similar in, in the tone, in the quality. I felt that there's gonna be some magic in my Moog, there is actually, but there's the same magic in the UAD and Filter Freak. And if you ask me, was there any audible mm, difference in, in quality of these? No. Then virus seemed quite uh, resonating a bit, which is no, no resonance. It's just the, the correct character of this analog filter. It's called analog. Then volcano, I used an algorithm that's called classic and it's overdriven already. It's not clean at all. But okay, I, I don't have to make them sound absolutely the same. I'm not looking to compare them in a scientific way, but I'm just going to see the general quality of the tone of the filter. Uh, and actually this volcano setting is cool to compare with acid box, which is completely something completely different. It's analog, it's fat, it's dirty. Uh, even on very moderate input saturation settings, when you're opening and closing it, it goes crazy, unpredictable, I would say. And Volcano has got a little bit of, of the same character, but I, I had to tell you that I had this feel of something still kind of artificial, you know. Mm, and if you ask me which one I like most, huh, Moog. Virtual UAD Moog Filter Freak are just like the same. And I like them all. And the second place goes completely to Acid Box, which is not too universal, but I can find some great use for this kind of dirty filtering. Let's go to, G to the saturated version. I also looked for comparable more or less settings don't get angry when you hear some differences, guys, okay? Let's take a listen. Okay, so now I have to tell you that the differences became more significant, more audible, and I hope they are still audible uh, on YouTube when there is AAC sound encoding. <laughs> anyway, I have to tell you that the real Moog got something incredible in the bass department, in the deepest bass when I'm opening this filter. Mm, the lows are so fat, are so round, yet present, 
that I didn't get this. The, the very same last percent in UAD and Filter Freak. Virus is a little bit different, and I would say it sounds it sounds digital, it sounds kind of artificial to me. Volcano came a little bit closer because it's still dirty and um, and more comparable, but it's opening slowly. I was turning the knobs like the same way, the same tempo. It opens up slower, definitely, and the acid box, it got even dirtier, even, even more <laughs> gritty. And also, when the filters are open, I can hear some very, very mm, significant differences. Moog filter is darker than the rest, I have to tell you, but it's noble. I like this way of darkening my sound, because I still can EQ, and it was well balanced, it was kind of noble, I would say, and it was really, I, I, I had this feeling bass plus the highs, this analog something that's hard to grasp, some, sometimes hard to de define maybe, but really I did have the feeling that it's the best. Then Moog and Filter Freak were very similar, similar I believe, and Acid Box was surprisingly bright with the with, with with the setting. It went like really harsh in the top. I still can cut it, and I really like it a lot. So so again, my first choice would be would be Moog, and still my second choice for some some uh, some less popular uses, less everyday work is still my acid box. Mm, but the rest sounds quite okay. Mm, mm, I would have a problem using Virus and Volcano as eagerly as, as, as the rest, but they are also cool, they are also fine filters, I would say. The last portion of our test is saturated filter with resonance added. Let's take a listen. That's it, and yeah, I know I put a little bit too much resonance on virus, maybe I put not enough resonance on UAD, just like 5%, maybe the timings are not the same, but still, I believe that I can compare the results here easy. And as for the opening closing the filter, 
Well, nothing really surprising here for me. I already know that Volcano opens up more slowly. I already know that Acid Box is gritty like hell. It's so dirty. Same as Volcano, actually. Uh, I know that the virus filter has got its own different character. And I know that Filter Freak UAD and Moke are similar. But mm, there is a difference for me for all the filters open. And I'd like to hear that part again. Yeah, and if you ask me, virus got way too bright in a bad digital way. I don't like it at all. Mm. Volcano is too dark, it's fully open, and it doesn't sound really like. And Moog is the most balanced one, and also this noble tone of it makes me this one my favorite. But I have to also tell you that Acid Box sounds amazing with this setting. Yeah, it's just a very cool saturation box. Do you remember my saturation test? Yes, it's on my channel. And I already knew it, that it's, it's a great thing for saturating signals. My favorite. Just for the general tone, the general impression, not scientific measurements. For real, Moog is my favorite. The hardware Moog filter will be hardware Moog filter. I'm still really, really surprised that UAD version and filter freak are so close to the real Moog leather filter. I mean, it's amazing. And the quality of these two is really, really great. But they come third in my comparison because my second choice for the general musicality, the general fun while listening, and the idea, the ideas how I could apply the filter. My second choice is Acid Box, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it sounds totally different, but it sounds very analog, very fat, very gritty. I love this thing. Uh, then comes, yeah, UAD and Filter Freak uh, versions of Leather Filter. Then my fourth choice would be Virus, and I always thought that Virus has got a really, really good digital filter. I still believe it's good, but I don't find it as good as I thought like five years ago. So yeah, it's a good filter, but it cannot be compared to the real Moog, come on. And as for Volcano, maybe that's the matter of, of, of the algorithm I chose. Uh, maybe that's just not my favorite one and that's why I'm not using it. I don't mind, it's different. It's fine that it's different. Um, but I didn't like the tone of it. It seemed artificial to me, though I was using it on this high quality button pressed on. Mm. And that's it, guys. Let's sum the things up. Hmm. Though my test wasn't maybe the most scientific one, the most extensive one, including more sound sources, more filters and more settings, I think it's totally enough to draw a conclusion that if you don't own an analog machine with analog filtering, you're perfectly fine. You're safe. You're there because virtual digital filters are amazing and they maintain the same top quality. So of course, if you can afford a Moog, if you have a place to put it, if you want to consume more electricity, go and buy it. If you can't for any reason or don't want to buy this, don't worry, go for UAD XL, Moog XL filter, go for Filter Freak, for example, which is amazing and I'm really totally surprised with it. Go for Acid Box. Uh, it's just a machine of its own kind. It should have a separate review. But okay, maybe I didn't like the Volcano, but it's also very good. Same for Virus Filter. It's just good. So don't worry, just do music and choose your tools. If they are digital, analog, don't 
worry so much about it. Also guys, if there are filters of your choice, both analog and digital that you're using, or you suggest to test them out, let me know in the comments. I know my test is just a limited one, but I will always listen to your opinions and your ideas this time on filtering. So yeah, leave me a comment down below, subscribe to my channel, and get back soon for a new video. That's it for today. Take care.